Welcome back to the GCN Tech Clinic. In this video, myself and Alex are going to do our very best to answer some of your burning tech questions that you've been leaving under our videos. We've got a load of questions to get through today, so let's get on to the first question. First one is in from TJ. Hey y'all, I want to upgrade my shifting to DI2 or SRAM ETAP. My current bike is the 2014 Orbea Orca. Is it worthwhile to sell my current bike and get a, a new production model with DI2 or ETAP? or save the money and upgrade his current bike. So, pros and cons Oh, this is both. a tricky one. This is it like, is. Oh, I don't want to do, but what I would be particularly mindful of is at the moment, there is still a little bit of a limited supply of there some is. components and some group set items. So, if you are thinking of upgrading the stuff onto your existing bike, I would really make sure that the availability is there for all of the components that you need, because there are a few bits that are very hard to get hold of. But, Personally, I think I'd be inclined to look to sell your current bike and get the best value you can for it and then put that towards a new model. That way you're going to be able to have access to that new DI2 or ETAC group set, wherever it takes your fancy, and you're going to get a current model bike, which, I mean, come on, everyone likes a new bike, don't yeah, they? Yeah, a new bike day is, yeah. it is nice. But then it is nice to have your old bike and work on it, upgrade some things. You can even get second-hand DI2 or whatever you fancy. Yeah, yeah you so could nice pick up to, a second-hand yeah. group set. That's a good suggestion. So a second-hand group set might be the most cost-effective way of upgrading your bike. Yeah. And then you can just replace like the chain, the cassette, any of the consumable parts. So something, something to consider there. But, both both yeah. are quite good options, aren't they? Yeah, both so. are good options. And you've got to weigh up what is most important to you. Cheapest option, buy second-hand components and replace it on your current bike. Slightly more expensive option, sell it and get a new bike. But you have got everything box fresh. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. Next question in is from the Arnic91. They say, hey guys, I've got a gravel bike with clearance for 40 millimeter tires. I've currently got 28 millimeters tires. Does the extra space between the wheel and frame cause some sort of aero disadvantage or is there any other disadvantage that the space gives? No. No, I, I've never thought about this, but it's, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah, so we see lots of modern frame designs. They use like a wider fork, aren't they? Because you can see just how much different they are to models from just a few years back. And it's the same on the rear seat stays. So manufacturers are doing this to minimize the disruption of airflow from the wheel when it's spinning around all as fast as it is, and then the airflow going over the frame. So I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but I mean, a gravel bike, it's not exactly designed with aerodynamics and speed in no, mind, is it? No, it's not the fastest, no, fastest so bike. You're definitely not gonna be at a disadvantage, and any slight difference it makes, be that positive or negative, I don't think you'll notice when you're out riding, yeah. Next question in from e Izuma. For someone getting into racing on a budget, would I be better getting a carbon frame with alloy wheels or an alloy fra frame with carbon wheels? Whoa. Tough one, but personally, I would go alloy frame, nice fancy carbon wheels. Because mm, yeah. the wheels are what are on the ground. They're gonna, new wheels are gonna feel nicer, yeah. faster, lighter. lighter. Yeah. I mean, what, you what? look absolutely boss with carbon wheels, don't yeah. you? I would agree, actually. Yeah, I would probably go alloy frame and carbon wheels. But one of the main things you want to look at if you're getting into racing that's going to have the biggest um, impact on the sort of speed, the rolling resistance stuff, is to get some lightweight tyres and lightweight inner tubes or switch across to tubeless. But if it was me, I would probably agree with you, go alloy frame and carbon wheels. But one of the downsides of having an aluminium frame is by using that as the material, you are limited on the shapes and the fancy aero designs that manufacturers can yeah. make it from. So if that's something that you're really into, then you might want to look for a carbon fiber frame and then upgrade the wheels at a later date. But you know, I'd agree with Manon. Hmm. There you go. Next question is from Neil Partridge. They say, hi, love the channel. Can I use a park tool cyclone to clean the chain of my bike. Oh, so that's one of those um, That's one of chain... these things, similar to this. I've oh, got a pretty, knockoff one here. Yeah, pretty much the same. So can he use that to clean his bike whilst it's on his indoor trainer, or is it best to remove the bike first and put the wheel in? What do you reckon? I think you can use this, because mm. you just pop the chain in there, it's put the degreaser in, it's all, well, it stays nice and clean. You don't mm. get spraying degreaser everywhere. Run the chain through. Clean that's it simple. all up. Yeah, I think you can do that, no problem. I'd go with that. Yeah. All I would say is make sure you give everything a good wipe afterwards with a clean cloth. And if you need to give the cassette a good clean, you've got two options. Take your bike off the trainer, clean it with a, a cloth and some degreaser, try not to 
get it all soaking wet, or just remove the cassette and clean it that yeah. way. Hmm, don't don't go hosing your trainer down. Yeah, just don't, definitely don't, don't recommend do that. that. <laughs> Next question in is from Alexander Katamo says, I've got an old mountain bike frame that I want to convert to a road bike to keep on my indoor trainer. My local bike shop tells me this is iffy, but Ooh, it seems like the type iffy. of thing you guys do all the time. Yeah. I'd say you could do that, no problem. Yeah, I would too. obviously going to be a few diff different things, like your position, the geometry is very different on a mountain bike to a road bike, so you might need to spend a lot of time getting your position as close as you can to what it is on a road bike, but I don't see any if other you just reasons. Want, if you want the cheapest way to have a dedicated bike on the indoor train up, sounds like a fantastic yeah. way to me, just like you say, bear in mind the position changes and stuff. Hmm, simple. Next question in is from N. Clark, who says, why does my road bike seem to fit me differently on my indoor trainer? Say they're using a kicker snap versus when they're on it in the out, outside. So if it's on the trainer, their seat post feels as if it's too high, but when they're outside, it's totally fine. No discomfort whatsoever. So they've had a bike fit and they know that their position is right. So, so they're curious. Maybe they're not the only one. Who knows? Well, we've had this kind of similar questions a few times, people feeling a little bit more discomfort on the indoor trainer position, feeling a little bit different. But you have to bear in mind that you are probably sitting in a different position on the bike. You're not moving around as much and it might feel a little bit different. And um, it's also worth noting, do you have like a little block under your front wheel? Oh, if you one are? of those risers, yeah. yeah. yeah you, that's you, important. you don't have to have a specific one, you could just use some old books or something. That's what I used to cook, old cookbooks I used oh, to put okay. underneath <laughs> just to make it level. because depending on how you have your trainer. Yeah, you just got to make sure that the amount that the rear wheel is lifted off the ground is the same on the yeah. front so that your position is just right. And like you say, I think the fact that you're in a static position is what makes the biggest change. You're not stopping at traffic lights, you're not getting out of the saddle to go up hills. Even just like going around corners and stuff, you move yeah. your body a little bit. Set yourself a little like mental note that every five minutes or so on your trainer, get out of the saddle, move around, stretch your shoulders a little bit, just, just yeah. keep active, I think, yeah. Next question, go on then, Manos. Oh, where is our next question? Nathan um, Gray. Yeah, Nathan Gray. I have a wheel on trainer and an alloy bike. When I get out of the saddle or, or get on the bike, I hear creaking noise, which I believe to be from the frame, is the frame moving Ooh. while the wheel stays still. Is this a problem? Any concerns? No, I wouldn't be concerned. I think in this situation, I would first check that the wheel is held securely in the frame. Then I would check that the bike and the wheel is held securely in the trainer. So I think this noise is just coming from a little bit of movement between all of those components because well, there just simply is so many different connections. It's likely to have a little bit of free play. I wouldn't worry about it, but it could also just be caused from a different component on your bike. It could be the handlebars, it could be the pedals. It can be really tricky business to isolate some of these creaks from your bike, but I wouldn't be concerned. Check everything's tight and fitted correctly. And um, all should be well, I think. Mm. Yeah. That was our last question good, for this was, week's yeah. Tech Minute. Yeah, good job. Hope we uh, have helped everybody out. If we didn't get to your questions, sorry about that, but keep submitting it in the comments section down below. Hopefully, we'll get to it in the coming weeks. Right, see you later.